to be wondering what I'm doing. But I think one of the obligations of the technology development board is also to promote the appropriate technologies that we are expected to observe right now. So seated on the dais, I mean in the galaxy of uh, scientific fraternity, we have uh, member Niti Ayog and one of the very eminent scientists of our times, Dr. Saraswat. We have uh, Secretary Biotechnology and also Secretary Science and Technology, Dr. Renu Saroop, Dr. Sheikh Ramanda, DGCSIR, Professor Ashutosh Sharma. He has, somebody said he has become ex, but he is not ex because he has superannuated as secretary which was a lesser assignment as a scientist. He is not superannuated as a scientist. <laughs> so, I think that is uh, the advantage of uh, being a part of this fraternity. And uh, of course, Secretary Technology Development Board, Shri Rajesh Patek, whom you heard uh, welcoming us in a very polite, chaste Hindi. Thank you very much for your kind words. And uh, we've also heard the three representatives from the industry, Dr. Veer Prasad, Dr. Krishna Ella, who I think, uh, yeah, now you can see me. I hope you stand by your words. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had uh, been very polite, politically polite, saying I look handsome without having seen my face. <laughs> but I'm glad that he has uh, stood by what he said after I removed the mask. And of course, our grand friend, Akshata, and uh, never that we can forget his Pallav Bhagla, who's virtually become a perpetual part of the scientific fraternity. In fact, he steps in whenever there is a missing link. And when the scientists uh, tend to forget science, he is there to remind us. So I've seen him working with passion over the years. And uh, yes, it was a pleasure listening to the recorded messages, Kiran. Mujumdar Shaw, whom I have known for almost two decades, ever since she lodged insulin in the Biocon, because that was my stream of uh, work and specialty in diabetes and nephrology. And uh, Dr. Vijay Raghun, uh, I think either the message recorded was uh, beforehand or maybe he was not sure about the program because uh, he would otherwise never be politically incorrect with not addressing the minister. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no problem, very close as a friend, as a colleague. And we just met this morning also. So we can take this liberty with each other. But nevertheless, a very eminent uh, scientific person and a versatile too. He's been biotechnology, also in the engineering sector, one of the most celebrated alumni of the IIT. And of course, the members of the board and the entire TDP family. At the outset, I have to congratulate you for this Silver Jubilee celebration. And it is indeed a very pleasant and a providential coincidence that when the TDP celebrates its uh, 25th year, India celebrates 75th year of the independence. And when India completes its century, TDP would have completed its golden jubilee. Now 25 years is not much of a span in the age of an organization or a board like this. 
but uh, going by what I was listening from the speakers one after the other, I think there may be a reason to say that it has done reasonably well in a short span of life. Though I can't say that that was about all that could have been done. And when I say these 25 years coincide with 75 years of independence, I cannot but help recalling what the Honorable Prime Minister said from the ramparts of the Red Fort on the 15th of this uh, last month when he said that the next 25 years are going to determine the old map of what India is going to be at 100. And he also made it a point to underline and to emphasize that the road map and the success and the outcomes thereafter would be primarily, rightly so, determined by science and technology. Because that is where, <coughs> in every sphere of our activity, technology has taken over in a big way in the last few years. And therefore, when India emerges on the top at the age of 100, which is a very small age in the case of a nation, it is too long for a mortal being. None of us, I think, can actually dream of that. But for a nation, it's a young age. So when India at 100 emerges on the top, the bulk of credit for that would have gone to the scientific and technological achievements. So many of us may not be around by then, but I'm sure those who celebrate 100 would testify what I'm saying today. India actually even today is fast emerging as a leader in virtually every stream of science. And this happened very fast, particularly so after Shri Narendra Modi took over as Prime Minister, because we had the human resource, but possibly there was some missing gap in the political will or the political prioritization. And that was filled up after 2014. And today, as was being mentioned by Dr. Saraswat, when the landscape changes, we are already into it in a very big way, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's climate research, whether it's solar energy, whether it's astronomy. This morning I tweeted there was an Indian who's become an honorary member of the Indian Astron International Astronomical Association. And uh, I think that it also goes to the fact that he hails from a, a remote place called Ladakh, where you hardly have a tele technology development board to assist him, but yet he's made it. So that shows how out of proportion in excess is the human resource in India, with or without TDP. And I think that is borne out best in the field of space technology, because incidentally I happen to be dealing with all the science streams in the government of India. Today, because I'm also uh, being students of science, all of us are taught very early to talk with evidence. We have every evidence to claim that India actually has emerged on the top already by the time it was 75, at least in the area of space technology. Our pictures, images procured by Mangalyaan are now being sought by NASA. Is that not miraculous? Actually, these things don't occur to our mind because either we are in the lab or we are on the critical stage when you are traveling these things. So you may not have time to get into these small nuances, but it's something very miraculous. And uh, the Chandrayaan, which was our mission, went and reported back the presence of water. So the other day, while addressing the students in, a, in an IIT last week, I said what is fascinating and what should be actually the esteem of the, of a science scholar 
of India today is that we started off our space journey when certain countries like Soviet Union, the then Soviet Union and America were already on the verge of landing on them. Because Sara Bhaiyas, the Zaman started off somewhere in the late 50s. And uh, in 60s, they were already planning both the countries of landing on the moon. And we were, what were we doing? We were still singing songs, nursery rhymes, Alabama. <laughs> And when I was uh, referring to this Chandrayaan having discovered the presence of water, I said, have you ever realized America was the first to land a human being on the surface of the moon, Neil Armstrong. He also had a walk around which was much publicized and the famous dialogue that he delivered might have gone choreographed before he went. He said a small step for man is a huge step for mankind when he walked up. So I was telling these boys from my IIT the other day, I said Neil Armstrong had a walk around but he could not see water. <laughs> which R. Chandrayaan many years later went and saw, brought back the picture and NASA was immediately there seeking this evidence because this is a reflection of possible human habitat being there or the possibility of it. So it's been a tremendous leap forward which is again a testimony to the fact that we had the resource, we had the capability, we had the caliber. Maybe we didn't have that kind of a milieu available. And thanks to this present dispensation and the present Prime Minister that we have that. And today, Technology has virtually entered every household of India, in one way or the other. And it is a mismatch to link it only to literacy. If you go to the remote, because I have been traveling all over and for seven years I was looking after North East, the most far-flung terrains. The most illiterate Indian would be able to tell you how to take a picture and WhatsApp and send it across, which you may not be able to do. So that's a natural scientific temper available in a common Indian. And that is what actually spells the mantra of success for any nation. So it's not only every household, it's also every sector today. Dr. Saraswat was mentioning the anecdote where the Honorable Prime Minister told him that you are so far above in missiles. Why don't you now do something for the society? And that he was impressed by thought, I'm glad. But the fact is that the founding fathers of science in India had actually achieved this. But none, nobody believed them. I don't know how many of us sitting in this. Uh, among this august audience in this room would remember that when Homi Baba launched the nuclear program, the atomic program, he very categorically said loud and clear that our atomic program, our nuclear program is going to be for peaceful purposes. The world didn't believe him, even we did not. Because Hiroshima, Nagasaki had happened just seven, eight years earlier. The word atomic was an abuse. Looked upon with contempt. So, some of the outside world also might have skeptically thought that maybe India is also planning an atom bomb and this is a camouflage being held out through Homi Baba. But he didn't mean it, and today we have indicated it. Today, our atomic energy is being used to increase the shelf life of our vegetables, our fruit. I was instrumental in getting pineapple from Tripura to Delhi. And then I was also mentioning, why can't you do, use the same technology? Because unfortunately, we have not reached out to the stakeholders. So I got in touch with the agriculture ministers of the different states. And I said, for example, in, in Kashmir, in Sirinagar, you lay down the cherry along the Dal Gate, along the lake every morning. 
and people of the village who come there to sell it. By afternoon, they finish selling out. And when there is lack of number of tourists, the cherry gets spoiled. The same cherry can be brought to Bombay Delhi. In fact, our atomic energy applications today are more useful and more applicable for our day-to-day -day living or for bringing in ease of living for us rather than causing destruction through missiles. We have, we have indicated what Bombay was and we are actually into this now. Even in COVID times, it was the Department of Atomic Energy which was the first one to come out with the technique of having reusable PP kits. Because in the beginning, you would recall one and a half year back, we were short of PP kits. So we are already into it. The only point is that the eyes see what the mind knows. So the mind doesn't know, so the eyes don't see. In a way, sometimes I feel we are much ahead of many other nations. And therefore, science and technology is going to be the key to India becoming self-reliant and also realizing Prime Minister Modi's dream of Atmanirbhar Bharat. And as I said, the, there is no dearth of human resource. But the challenge is how to channelize it and how to reach out to it. Luckily, we have a Prime Minister who is very supportive, who gives us the liberty to try out-of-box experiments as long as we can reason out with him. And we also have the capacity to evolve new paradigms. Now, for example, when I say the Technology Development Board. I think the basic thing is that Indian innovations for Indian conditions. That is one mantra. So we cannot be reading a foreign journal which I have read in plenty. Also had many publications. Like Indian remedies for Indian conditions. The phenotype is different, the genotype is different. So, our ultimate Yardstick would be how much of the Indian innovations, depending on Indian conditions, have been supported by us, whether we are in the GDP or in the ministry or in the department. And how much have we reached out to the potential startups? We can drive pleasure and pride, and which of course we should also, because uh, that is how we would add to our profile. Now, for example, when we repeatedly cite the example of uh, Akshata, which of course she richly deserves, the point is not, the point is how many Akshatas have I discovered? Akshata came and discovered me and discovered the board. How many have we reached out? And being part of Team Modi, this is precisely what we have been trying to do with a Jinu. We have a technology center in on the Guwahati Shillong Highway, which is called CBTC, Cane Bamboo Technology Center. Now it's been given a different nomenclature, which is dealing with scientific innovations in bamboo. And among the various uh, activities undertaken over there, we came across a lady who is also by, among certain sections, become famous as Bamboo Queen. She gave us the slogan of one bamboo, one lakh. So I got interested and I started. You see, problem is that we are going by the, we are depending too much on the literate and qualified scientists. Whereas the innovation comes from the unqualified. As Francis Bacon once said about literature, most of the cause, most of the harm to the cause of literature is done by the teachers of literature. So I sat with her and it was amazing. Ek mask, ka ek piece. She demonstrated how to make a toothbrush. I think somebody like you could also get it done. One toothbrush, one pair of socks, one this, what you wear, necklace, ring, 
also wall hanging and one vase would be able to create articles which would fetch you one lakh in the market. So that is innovation. And for that we'll have to reach out. I don't know what would have been the visualization and conceptualization of the founding fathers of TDP, but to my lesser mind, that is what it seems to be. And therefore, the focus of our activities has to be linked to startups. Obviously, naturally, which is being reiterated time and again, even by the Honorable Prime Minister. But the point is to reach out and discover the startups. Not the startup is struggling to discover, because there are passion driven youngsters like she is. They would go from pillar to post, knock every door, then somebody would tell them, ah, wah, pare, kya hai technology development, wo kaha hai, wo hai. That's what that must have happened to you by the time you reached. Or maybe you are living in a technology age, so they would have given you some email ID. And then you also had the advantage of having, you know, ventured out in COVID because the government agencies were under pressure to push forward COVID projects. And therefore the actual test will happen in non-COVID times, before and after. It's something like appearing for a, you know, preparing for an exam and then having done all the guest papers or the past papers. So the actual preparation will be tested about if the question paper is different from what has already been shown or tried in the guest papers. And therefore, essentially, our focus will have to be to reach out to discover startups who may not be technologically savvy, like I mentioned the example of this lady, but who we can generalize and make them realize where their potential can actually come into play. And of course, to reach out to youth, because this is a country where more than 65% of the population is below the age of 40. So how can we think of India becoming a superpower without we carrying along this huge bulk of population? They are the majority, they are the real India. We are here all by default. A market you can choose to be white, black, you can even color pink and blue these days. <laughs> all, color, all kinds of hair colors are also available. But that is actually the crux of it. And then how far can we reduce their dependence on government sources? From the government we have to support them to become independent so that they can carry forward with or without our support. And that would also change the mindset of the youth who has been, because of the long many decades of feudal and colonial legacy, become a victim of a mindset where, you know, job for him means a salaried government job. So every day, now being in public life, we face dharnas, pradarshans, why? No government in the world can give a government salary job to each and every youth. But a responsible government is the one who creates conditions for the youth to be able to earn their life view. So therein would be also our focus if we are able to do that. Now for example, we have a in uh, Dr. Vanda's uh, and for that entire society because you can't leave everything to government and those sounding little unorthodox I would say it's very it's a very risky proposition leaving to government and if you say the innovations in this country and the startups in this country will go only with the support of that that means the society has abundant its responsibility because we have to evolve as a whole. I was just referring to Dr. Banda's uh, department has an aroma mission. We have a boy 
who comes from a very remote village. Now, these are the actual successes stories, not the ones which have reached out to us. I went and discovered him. So we called him there. He lives in a remote place called Dota district, in remote Jammu Kashmir. We called him to his lab in the media didn't know who he is. Dr. Manda had put him on a webinar across the country along with startups. He may not be very much well read. A young boy called Bharat Bhushan would tell you how he had earned lakhs within three months. And seeing him because that that lavender cultivation, which is a popularly uh, cited sometimes as a purple revolution. And seeing him closely at work, there were two youngsters, both of them B.Tech, new graduates. They didn't know where TDP is. They don't even know if this science and technology department exists or not. So they saw this boy working and they said, yeah, tu to They left their jobs. I meant both of those boys also. They left their jobs and since they were technologically more equipped, because they had a little bit of basis also, they also started doing same. And they tell me that in five months, we have doubled our income through this cultivation. So I told them, you know, with a, in a pleasant humor, I said, Prime Minister has asked us to double farming the income by 2022. You doubled it in 21 itself. <laughs> and then I, we made them interact with some of the government job seeker boys. And I asked them, I said, now you tell them the government sector you get an increment once in a year, which is an enhancement. Now these boys have made an increment for themselves within three months, within five months. They said we have doubled within five. So double the more than what is the increment available in government salary job was managed by them in five months, and the scale of it is to be determined by their effort. Such huge possibilities are available. And therefore, all of us have to actually sensitize us, sensitize every stakeholder, whether it be the youngster, the startup, the industry. And as you were sort of referring to Mark, of course, all of us, we are all interlinked. We can't be working in silos. And if we do so, then we can't be succeeding. Now, during the COVID times, there were pressure on everybody to push forward these projects. And I think the actual, and therefore the vaccine also, came into limelight. But the actual test will happen in non-COVID times, before and after COVID. Like, when, uh, when Muhammad Rafi died, all the newspapers were full of obituaries. And one of the obituaries which I very distinctly remember somebody wrote, is not how greatly he sang for great movies. It is how greatly he sang for the movies which were never seen, which were flops, which were never even released, but the song was hit. And when I say so, I also say with a certain amount of scientific, because I have been into this business of doing research and teaching for almost 25 to 30 years, having guided thesis of naturally at least two dozen of boys and girls. The spectrum of the problem also goes on. You have a celebrity for vaccine now. You have people reaching out for vaccine. But actually, to be very honest, if we ask ourselves, just before the COVID times and even before, we had virtually got out of infection. In fact, I was addressing the medicos uh, the other day. There is a deep delay at the Ames. So I said, sometimes I feel guilty we have done you wrong because they were all, you know, geared up as COVID warriors overnight. I said, in the last 20 years, we had virtually stopped teaching you about infections because infections had virtually been overcome in India. So the entire emphasis of teaching, the policy planning, even government schemes, even health ministry schemes was on non-communicable diseases, whether it was diabetes, colitis, it was coronary disease, it was dyslipidemia or with the increasing lifespan, increasing incidence of malignancies of the late age. So I said, we did you wrong, but you have actually vindicated us by overnight reorienting yourself to treat the COVID infection. 
There were earlier times when infection till about 60s, 70s, that was the mainstay. Your antimicrobials came in much later, vaccines even much later. So antimicrobial, the first one was penicillin, which was said to be queen of drug, came in late 40s. And then the first line of antitubercular drugs led by streptocytosin came only in the early 1950s. And then gradually started becoming available till then it was sanitorium arrangement, management. And even I as a junior resident was sent to do a posting in a tubercular sanitorium, the most famous one of that called the Tamram Sanitorium uh, in Chennai, which was then known as Madras. So that time the focus was, and when we as students we were told, we were taught, we were told, you read syphilis, you read medicine. And that was an infection, starting from primary stage, secondary stage, they virtually affecting all the systems. In the primary stage, the skin, and then in the tertiary stage, others, and finally brain and heart. Now, in the last 10 years, the dictum was if you read diabetes, you read everything, you read medicine, because it affects all the organs. So, suddenly this turnover and the interest in vaccines has happened now. And I'm glad that you have stemmed it to fill that requirement. But when you go past this, then we will have to face the challenge of the spectrum which exists then. And to that extent, we also have to keep our, to, to reshaping ourselves, our obligations, our agenda, our role. And as I said, then TDP coming back to it cannot then be seen to be functioning in silos. Because if